Hi, Mikel. Hello. What's the, uh, the team news after Chelsea? Is Tommy Asu going to make the squad? If he trains today and he feels good, uh, he will be available tomorrow, yes. Any fresh injuries after Chelsea at all? Uh, no, we haven't really trained. They had recovery session yesterday, and today we are training late in the stadium because obviously the turnaround it's uh, it's again what they did to us um, a few weeks ago. So it's the best way to try to train as late as possible to be able to do something before the match. It's a massive match in the context of the top four. If you win, do you knock United out of top four contention? Do you think? I think he's going to have a lot of twists still, and uh, that's what we have to do. Perform and play well tomorrow to deserve to, um, to win the match, which um, I think it will be difficult. I've just announced Eric Ten Hag is their new manager. Mm. Have you been impressed by what he's done at Ajax? Yes, I think he's been really good. What he did a couple of years ago in the Champions League, especially the way he, his teams play, um, it's a Man United decision, nothing more to say. And back in December, they announced Ralph Rangnick just before they played Arsenal, they won 3-2, announcing the new manager before this game. Will there be any impact, do you think, on the fixture? For us, no. I, I don't know what it would happen to, uh, for them, but uh, for us, nothing changes. Um, just on the Chelsea um, situation then, and Eddie Nketiah's goals, you were saying you, you've been unfair on him and he should have played more. Will he be playing more on Saturday? We will see. Let's see how he, he recovers, how everybody is, and, um, and we'll try to put the best possible team tomorrow to win the game. Have the Inketia goals made you even more determined, though, to keep him and to time to this club? It, uh, it's what, he's, um, what he does all the time, and uh, he hasn't had enough minutes this season to show uh, what he can do, and that, uh, that's why I said what I said. And some players came in against Chelsea and did so well. El Nene holding Eddie. It's going to be hard to change a kind of winning side like that, isn't it? It is hard, but uh, fortunately that's been the case in many weeks when we have to pick other players that they have a step in and, and they don't well for the team because they always prepare well. So that's what we expect. That doesn't mean that we're always going to repeat the same lineup. Um, we have options to change and we have options to change tomorrow again and play in different ways. Just finally, how confident are you about the top four finish? going into this game? I'm very excited um, about the, the option that uh, we have ahead of us and we're going to give it a go and try our best to try to reach there. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Max from the Premier League. Hi, Mikel. Um, starting with your opponents tomorrow, how would you assess Man United's performance against Liverpool? I'm not here to assess anybody's performance. Um, I watched the game. It was an exceptional game. The first half, uh, especially the way um, Liverpool played, it was outstanding. We all know how difficult it is to go to Anfield. Um, they have really good moments in the season. They have exceptional players and, and we know that they can beat, they have the ability to beat anything. I know you talked about Saka's penalty after the Chelsea match, but what do you think it says about his confidence level at the moment that he, he stepped up and took that? What it tells me is that the uh, moment that he had and that experience that he had is over. And he learned from that and he's willing to take more responsibility and he's willing to take um, big decisions uh, that can define big moments. And that's what I want, that uh, at his age he's confident to, to take that step forward and, and when it's important he's ready there for the team to make uh, that contribution. And last one, have you noticed the change in energy since the Chelsea win in the camp? After winning a dressing room is much better than, than you lose it. When I have to analyze that energy, obviously it is. But uh, what I'm proud about this team is how they behave when things are not going our way and, and when things become difficult and, and how willing everybody is to push the, the boat in the same direction. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. There were three academy products who scored um, on Wednesday. Mm. There's also obviously been a lot of attention on them, the young players, throughout the season. Can you just tell us how they've sort of dealt with that as the season's gone on? Well, that's because all the work that uh, a lot of coaches and a lot of people that made decisions to recruit um, our academy players did in the past, and that's at the end the fruit of a lot of work that they have done. So all the compliments, I think, they should be for them and for the players that they have to step in again in a in a big match where if you want to play in Champions League, I said it, you have to go to this stadium, you have to be able to win, and uh, and it's rare, but um, our three academy players um, scored and made a difference in the game. And on Saturday as well, there's a plan for the supporters group, um, Ashburton Army, to do a TIFO display on the, in the clock, mm. I think. 
how much of a difference can the fans make at this stage of the season when everything is so you know, crucial? I'm really pleased to hear all those things because that initiative means that um, they are really engaged with the team, that they want to show their engagement with the team, um, that they want to participate and they feel like they are really participating in the success of the team. And I always said that if we make this stadium a fornance, it's going to be really difficult not to be successful. And they have a big, big part to play and hopefully tomorrow they can help us to, to do that. Thanks, Josh. Ian, to talk to you. Hi, Miguel. How are you? You're right? I'm good. Um, I see a lot of similarities between Arsenal and Man United. The manager serving there for a long time with great success, leaving, and, and then the club struggling to recapture those glories. Um, how much is it, have you had to struggle to turn Arsenal around? You, you are still turning them around, but how much have you, have you, has it been a struggle? <laughs> Normally, when you have to make that many changes and that many decisions, um, that are tough and they've been sitting there for a while. Uh, it's pretty difficult for the manager to continue unless you are extremely successful. Um, but we done that together. It's not a decision that I have made myself. It's a decision that we have thought really carefully, a direction um, and a vision that we decided to implement at the club that we need that he had his risks, but it was, in our opinion, the best way to move as fast as possible and in an efficient way. And then you need support. And uh, I had a great connection to, um, with Edu, with the board, with the ownership. And uh, that relationship is vital, and especially in this stage in our project, because without that, there is n we don't have, at the moment, five world-class players that all the issues that we can have as a club, they're going to hide them every week because they score hat-tricks here. We don't have that. So what we have to do is exceptional people that are so connected with a very clear direction and vision about what we want to do with the club and as well our people believing in what we do, of course. See, that, that patience that Edu and the board have given you has, has not been afforded to any of the managers that came in at Manchester United. What advice would you give their new manager? I cannot give any advice, you know, I haven't been 25 years in a row to give advice to anybody. I just uh, try to do my job as, as good as possible and, um, and the rest have to try to do the same. You're in this battle with Spurs for top four. Your team is very young, the goalkeeper is, is young, right through the team and there's three academy graduates who, who scored the other night. Um, are, we, are we almost not even yet seeing the best of what your team can, can no. achieve? I think the potential of of the individuals and the collective, it's uh, it's much bigger. I hope. In terms of? In terms of the quality, the consistency, the delivery, the experience that they have, um, the amount of time they have played at professional level, the amount of time they've been coached um, in the way that I want the team to play, um, to go through struggles, to go through pressure, to get to understand each other. They haven't been playing this group of players. They haven't been playing together for a long time, and there are a lot of things that can be done much, much, much better. Just one more quick one. Um, you're a family man, as I am with children. Um, Ronaldo could return tomorrow. Obviously, mm -hmm. incredibly sad, and, and, and well mm -hmm. beyond football. What that man has suffered this week. <sighs> I don't think I'm allowed to talk about something like that because unless you experience it, you probably you cannot um, be in the same level to express or to go through the pain that uh, you should be feeling about it. Um, at least what this country and this league have shown uh, with what happened at Anfield the other day, I think it's exceptional. Uh, that's what a sports um, should be leading, which is to find some unity uh, at the human level that sometimes is missing and yesterday was a great example and something to be really proud to be participating in a league when when uh, some clubs and some people that are involved in this sport are able to to show such a such a thing thanks mark from pierre oh, okay. you said uh, on wednesday night that Lacka was only fit for for 10 minutes you expected him to be available from the start tomorrow he trained uh, yesterday and uh, hopefully he will be feeling today. So after COVID, we have players that they have a struggle for, for weeks, others that have recovered quicker. Um, let's see, but obviously it's, it's a player that we need and, and, and contributing and being at his best and hopefully he can recover quickly. One of those players that came in on Wednesday night that I think most people were surprised about was, was Mario Nene. He doesn't play that often, but when you always seem to pick him in quite big games. So that just shows you the trust and faith that you have in him. I always say that for me, it's one of the most important players in the squad. 
uh, for what he does when you give him the chance to play and, and for the things that he does when he doesn't play. It's, it's a phenomenal person. Uh, and then you have to judge the footballer as well that someday he doesn't get probably the credit that uh, he deserves. He had an offer to leave last summer, but you asked him to stay. Was that, was that part of the reason behind that? It was more in January, more than, than the summer, and um, and I think he understood that uh, with the squad that we had at the moment, I could not let another player leave. And um, it's a tough balance because at the end, they are in a period in their career where they are looking to extend their, their football lives. But at the same time, I thought that uh, he could be important for the team in, in the last part of the season. He's out of contract in the summer. Is, it, is that another one where it's another one that we're going to have another conversation at the end of the season and um, and see what we do with with that one as well. You're, you're keen to keep it, it sounds like. I'm really happy with him. That's what I can say. Okay, last couple in the broadcast section, James. Mikel, Man United have, have struggled to redefine themselves really ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left, and it, I guess it's a similar challenge here with, with Arsenal. I just wondered, in that context, did you ever have any reservations about? coming here and taking the job. I know I Emery mean, obviously was here for a mm. while, but just in the context of having one club, one man moulded in his image for so long, did that ever sort of cross your mind about that? It did. <laughs> and, but it was tiny in comparison with the excitement and, uh, and the opportunity that I saw to join this club and, and try to do what we all wanted to do, which is uh, to get it back to, to where our sent took it um, at the highest level and, um, and obviously that desire was much bigger than the worries of, of failing. <laughs> you, you were heavily linked with the job immediately after Arson left. Mm. Did, did, did it come close? Did you almost take the job there? It was close, but uh, things happened for a reason and, and probably it was too soon. <laughs> Why didn't it happen in the end? Because there are people who made decisions and, uh, and they made a different decision. So it wasn't a case that you turned it down, it was just that you weren't. For me to turn down this club is extremely difficult and when you see it closely, um, there is something happening there that you just want to do it. Um, but again, it's, we design another exceptional coach that again is showing uh, in Villarreal how good he was. Uh, but sometimes it's not about the capacity of a, of a person, it's the capacity or the context that you showed or, or the team that it fits um, the model or is it just the right moment or not the right moment. Sometimes it's not about the capacity, it's about the timing. And finally for the broadcast section, we'll go to Simon from the stand. Just on that, Mikel, is it sometimes better to be the man after who succeeds someone like Benga just to have a little bit of a gap in between? Do you feel that helps? I don't know, but the thing is, the expectation this club is going to have is always to be to be the best because we're going to compare all the time with the with the beautiful moments that that we live together here. Um, there is no choice. Is uh, when is the perfect moment? I I don't know. What I'm saying is, do I really enjoy what I'm doing and how I'm doing it? Yes, because I know what we can do, what our potential is, and uh, and where we want to take it. And the rest is just fear because you're going to fail because you are looking there. But you need to understand when you can get there, and especially how you're going to do it. And the how is clear, probably is a matter of time. But if you start to go there and try to find a how when you don't have the tools to do it, I think you're going to struggle. Okay, thanks. That finishes the broadcast section. So farewell to everyone.